Holding back here, it's another episode of the Crazy Dad Lotus. Hey, check this out. Got the tires bolted on it on some of them. I still have the back right corner not on because I found a little problem I got to fix over there, but uh, I don't make anything big of it. They're not, I haven't spent any time restoring them. They still got the old cruddy tires on them and need to be repainted and everything, but I wanted to get the thing to where. I could take it off those sawhorses if I had to because I may get the bump side in here and shorten the bed on it in the meantime. But today I want to work towards getting the thing as far assembled as I can on the chassis. So we are moving to the shifter mechanism. And here we go. I have all of these parts. And this is going to be the next big jigsaw puzzle just like the brake system was. <laughs> and what I'm discovering here is I have this nice little exploded diagram right here and description of what the shifter mechanism is supposed to look like. And apparently on the later cars it's significantly different. At least the parts are, they look different, they're made different. So I've got, for instance in my picture here, I have this crossbar that runs across this way and I've been looking for a threaded shaft on both ends that would have these pieces on it and I couldn't find it and things weren't adding up but I had my this little red piece right here which is definitely this piece right here and in the same bundle with it was another little red tube and I all of a sudden realized hey they're about the same length Oh, looky there. It's threaded inside on both ends. Probably can't see it well. Sorry. But then I realized that in my box full of parts, and these are not all shifter parts necessarily, but as I'm digging through it, most of them look like they are. So, this is my jigsaw puzzle. And kind of just like you do when you do a jigsaw puzzle, you start with the outside edge pieces because they all have a straight line on them so you know where they go somewhere. And that's kind of the general uh, way I'm going to approach this. I have these pieces. I know that's the shifter. I know where it goes. I know that this is the front rod and that's the end that connects to the shifter. And because of that I just found this very unique little bolt that has a shoulder on it there. And as I got to check in, I realized that uh, I have two different size holes in this bar that it bolts to it. And so that will help explain that. Um, and eventually I've got to figure something out here because if you look at the bottom of this shifter, that bottom tab that actuates everything is bent over to one side. And I'm assuming that's a factory thing, but I don't know. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Maybe I need to straighten that out. Um, but we'll see. Um, I figured out that this part right here is the bushing system that goes inside of this. <coughs> and uh, I know where this cross piece goes on the frame. And so I'm just going to start piecing together what I've got. This back bar is completely different than anything shown in any of the pictures. Has me extremely puzzled, but uh, we'll start putting it together and see what fits. So there you go. I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to go through this box and start getting my uh, hind joint ends all sorted out and laid out together with the pieces that I've got here and kind of just lay it out on the floor at least back to this point here and that will give me a good feel for where I need to be at. I think it will help me determine how this has to attach to all of it and uh, then we'll be able to move forward there. So that's my game plan right now. We'll show you some more when I get there. We're back. So I think I have it figured out. <laughs> and it has only a faint resemblance to what's actually shown in the exploded diagram in the book here. It's, it has all the right pieces, they're just not the same pieces. Um, and most of them don't even hardly look the same. So, 
Well, we will start at the front here. I talked about uh, I have this little shoulder bolt right there, and uh, I am going to straighten that uh, bottom tang on the shifter lever. Just uh, executive decision here. I believe that's supposed to be straight, so I'm going to straighten it. Um, part of the reasoning that leads me to believe that is I have a very narrow space in here, and I think if that was bent that it would like it is right now it would tend to rub in there and cause problems so I'm assuming it's supposed to be straight so I'm going to do that um, then my little shoulder bolt there I have a bigger hole on this side than I do on this side so that's a pretty good indicator plus it's the right length of bolt to go in there so that'll take care of that and coming down here to the center section I took my two little red parts, actually I went through my box of parts here and started laying them out. And I had four of those little heim joints um, that were that size and I had another bigger one that was this size down here. And uh, so I assumed, well, those have to go in there. And the book, actually on this page right here, this diagram shows how to set those um, heim joints so that everything is the right length here and here so they stay in the right relationship to each other so I've got them put in there and adjusted and set properly I found uh, there's a metal bar down here that ties these two bushings together it's a sleeve and then I found this long bolt which fits in there just right so that'll be our pivot bolt there I came back to these pieces and they are entirely different than the ones shown in the picture as far as how they're put to how they're made but the the process or the if end effect is the same so I started looking for bolts that would go in here and up here tie my heim joints in and realized that neither of those spots are threaded they're just uh, sleeved and things and then I thought oh haha I have two of these long bolts here took them apart, stuck them in there, and they're obviously the ones that go there and there, which will tie this setup here together to these, and this pivots at a spot on the frame. So that'll have me all tied together there. It also determines which direction those long tubes go in, because they can only go one direction, and if you match it up uh, with what's in the diagram over there, it's going to work out right. So then this one comes all the way back to the car by the transmission. And I found that my bigger heim joint fits right here. And I've got this bolt right here, which then puts it in a perfect position to match up with what is on the transaxle over here. And I'll show that to you. So <clears throat> it's going to be a little tight here. So this right here is your shifter rod in the transmission. And my back heim joint is going to bolt to that right there. And that um, standoff bolt on the other one will bolt into that heim joint and brace right there. And uh, that, I think, is going to leave me exactly where I need to be on this thing. And I'm glad. That was much easier to figure out than um, what that brake system was. So I'm now going to proceed to put all these babies into the car and get them fitted and make this thing work. So my next shot will be having them in and showing you that setup. And... Uh, I don't think it's going to be all that hard, so I'll, I'll show you what we've got to do here. Um, let's see, I have to get stuff out of the way. So, a whole lot of your stuff ends up coming in through, let's see if this helps, through the back of the tunnel in here. And yeah, that's hard to see, but I kind of get an idea. So I think all my shifter stuff goes through that great big hole. And uh, that comes back here, and right here you've got the pivot mount for or the red bracket bolts into the frame. So we'll get that in there. We'll get the front one, front rod run up there, 
and then I believe that my other long tube comes along the side of the frame and back over into here, which is where that back of the transaxle mounts back by the sawhorse there. The front one will have to shove it up in here. Probably the most complicated thing that I'm going to have to do is figure out how to get the bolt through the bottom of the shifter arm and tightened up because I'm going to have to do all of that through here probably with one hand. <laughs> so anyway, that's part of the fun of what we're doing. I do have one piece that I'm missing, which there's supposed to be a second cover boot that goes on here in our exploded diagram. It's this piece and I haven't found it anywhere. I'm not sure how critical it is, um, but I'll keep an eye on it and I may have to put it in there later when I do find it. But as of right now, I think I've got all the major pieces here. We'll put it together and have it laying in there ready for our engine and transaxle installation. And we should be ready to go. So there you go. I'll follow through when I get it in the car. Hey boys and girls, we've got her in there. Um, I've still got a couple of things like I said before I don't know where this plate is that goes around here so I only have two of the four bolts in there and they're not tight um, but I do have functionality I can move it back and forth and side to side those are my critical pieces you can see my tube down in there moving comes out through the back of the chassis and this is where it starts to get interesting there's the tube you can see it moving there and it has this really interesting setup here. The top piece and that bottom bar kind of stabilizes, but those are what makes it move side to side and forward and backwards. So I've got that whole setup bolted in there. It's ready to go. Swing around here to the back of the car and you can see my tube going in there and coming out down there. Now I've got movement side to side and forward and back. And both of those things are what's required to operate the gear shift mechanism. So we got her done so far. I just have to go try to find this piece up here. And I can't find my shifter ball or the big boot that goes around it in the interior. So I suspect that all of those pieces are to, in one uh, set somewhere. Um, if not, who knows maybe I'll have to make something but uh, you could get by with just putting these on there but I really think that the purpose of that square thing is to give you more stiffness for when you're moving your shifter around so you don't end up breaking the bolts or wearing out this uh, thin sheet metal part of the chassis there so I'll go take a look in some of my old or other boxes of interior parts and if I don't find one uh, you may just see me uh, making one up here so there we go. That's uh, one more piece of the jigsaw puzzle of the chassis of the Crazy Dad Lotus.